Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today we're going to draw a dungeon room. We're actually going to spend a little bit of time and get the map out and well, a, a blank grid and we're going to draw a, a rug room. Now this is probably better be titled the rug trap room but I will explain uh, and once we've done that hopefully we will have a follow-up video and populate that and give you a lot of information about this particular room but today all we're going to do is just draw the map itself this is my very first time sort of doing it on live on screen so do apologize if my drawing is a little bit shoddy uh, i do know that more than a few of my players have commented on my skill at drawing trees being extremely poor all right, so I wouldn't say it's an art class, Rob, Rob, it's, it's definitely not an art class, but um, I pulled this map from an existing map, one of the maps that I got stolen, um, that I can't use anymore because it's no longer around. So I've pulled it from there, and I'm going to draw it for you today, and then um, I'm going to sort of talk about where I got the idea from. So let us start. Hopefully you can see the screen. All right, so I need to count out, make sure I've got my squares right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a square room, eight by eight, and we'll start off roughly, we'll just dot it out here, it's there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice and quick. One, two, three, four. Did I do it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm having troubles counting today. Um, it was not that hard a, a day at work, so uh, if you're wondering, um, is Fred suffering from uh, from work lag? No, it's not the case at all. I'm hoping that this pen will mark my mat sufficiently. Oh, this is this is the the problem when you start doing things for the first time, and of course, that is just not going to work at all. Okay, give me a second, guys. I'll just make sure I've got this working properly. Come on. There's always got to be a way of getting it to work right, correct? Okay, all right, let's try that again. I don't know necessarily if it's going to work, but let's try. Let's try. Oh, nothing. Is this going to be a bust? Honestly, I was hoping for a better result today. Is that what I think it is? That is a wet erase. Do I have non-permanent wet erase? Can I get away with using a wet erase on a dry erase mat? <laughs> Uh, oh God. All right, I knew there was going to be difficulties the first time around not trying to do this sort of thing, but obviously it started off early, uh, and it's a blue pen, so that's going to show up really well. Uh, okay, on a on blue grid. So there's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I went into the supermarket looking for pens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not a single dry erase marker. Everything but. Just ridiculous. Okay, all right. First wall. So we're we're eight by eight squares, and my door is actually going to extend one and a half squares across. So we'll just mark that across like so. Draw in the basics first, right? Uh, one, two, three, and then extends from there. Okay. So it's not completely symmetrical. But it's not close, uh, I'm far off it, for those of you who are wondering. And look, everything I'm doing is going to be something that anybody can do. I'm not drawing anything super fancy, not today, not at all. If, if I can't, if you can't do this, then is what the point is me doing this, you know? It's not, it's not sort of a, let's, let's make sure we've got, oh, have I missed a door? I have missed a door. There's a, there's a door over the other side there. One, two, three, yep, yeah, there there is. So, oh, this is gonna be the interesting part, will it rub off? Ah, there we go, lovely. All right, messy stuff. I got my pen. Okay, messy, I'll tidy it up later. Okay, so that's halfway across the three, so about there, and that's supposed to be. I had so much time, trouble setting up the camera, trying to point it down. Oh my gosh, that was so annoying. Okay, so first off, we've got some doors, and we'll mark them in now. Okay, for those of you who want to know where they are, these there's only three entry points. No secret doors. Um, where did I get this idea from? 
I've actually taken it from a rather poor movie called Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the very first one that they put out, and uh, one of the main characters goes into one of the villain's uh, bedroom and comes across a rug. And that rug is like quicksand. And I thought, well, actually, that's quite a cool idea, particularly for a room you, where you want to trap. So that's what we're going to do today. And then, of course, from there, we're taking our rug out. Now, the rug is going to not cover the entire floor. So we'll just mark it out. And I believe this is supposed to be four by four. You have no idea how hard it is to draw with a camera pointing down with tripods and I've got like lights all over the place are all in the way super difficult hopefully I'll get better at doing this and uh, there we go yep, yep. There's a, that, that's not a straight line but I'm trying okay all right and then we'll just shade it very very quickly to give you an idea that that is supposed to be our rug. Alright, now we've got to distract from the rug, okay, otherwise they are going to see three doors, probably walk right around the rug, and it'll never actually be utilised. So there's a reason why um, there's more than just a rug in the room. How's it going Eric, how are you doing? Uh, thieves have 5% chance at Climbing walls, levels of encumbrance. Yes, yes, encumbrance, I know. I, 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 people want me to do an encumbrance video, it's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. No secret doors? Yes, no secret doors. They're all supposed to be there. Okay, so in each corner, we're going to place something that will distract our players from the real threat, which is the rug. And that is uh, sets of armor. Now, the thing with any kind of um, suit of plate armor... Now, I'm doing circles, but I will try to actually draw more than just a circle, okay? I do promise. Uh, is that they're going to think that's animated armor. Now, you're, you're quite welcome to try to make that some sort of animated armor if you want. But I honestly don't think that it's necessary. But you could if you absolutely must. And you feel like that that, that would detract from the entire um, experience by not having it be um, animated armor. But it's up to you. And I, I didn't see that there was a necessity for that to be the case. So, but as I, as I said, completely up to you. I don't know if that looks like armor. Um, I'm, I'm doing this roughly. And, and with a little pen like this, it's not going to look that great anyway. In fact, I don't know why. I, why am I drawing um, suits of armor? I should just grab a miniature, right? No, because if I don't draw the armor and you guys don't have miniatures, it doesn't really work, does it? Okay. So you draw them however you like. If, if you can do a better job than me, which you probably can, by all means, do that. It's holding a sword in front of it. Uh, I would say a big hefty, uh, what do you call, great sword would be, be the go. And I was thinking in terms of the rug in the center, which we will go into more detail uh, tomorrow, but uh, that it would be potentially a quicksand. I like the idea of it being quicksand and doing some, some sort of acid damage. And on top of that, my arm will be out of the way in a second, guys. Uh, on top of that, what I thought would be really interesting is if uh, those that quicksand does some sort of acid damage and we would base that off the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide trap chart based off the character level. I thought that was a, a, a sort of a, an interesting way to go. Another option is that they step into it and they get, to, uh, say, transported to another plane of existence. I always thought that was interesting. Not a really good idea for low-level play. The other one is the, sm the smothering rug. You just use uh, the smothering rug stat block and have the rug curl up around them and of course it would have to be a much larger size. Include in this room some lanterns mounted on the wall with uh, say something like continual flame going and that is essentially it in terms of that room. So for those of you who are thinking, oh, he's going to come up with something really, really fantastic and clever and he's really good at drawing and all that sort of thing. Well, that's really not the case. Uh, it's got to be fast enough and done fast enough that you can do it for your players without taking forever, right? Plus, if you, if you have to be a, um, a professional artist to do this, I, I don't know why I'd even bother putting it on YouTube. Um, okay, not, not for 
here, try this. Will this work for you? Okay, now, what, what we've got here is just your basics, okay? Suits of armor in the corner as the distraction, making the players think that there's something up, and what we want them to do is step on the rug. That's essentially what we're after. It's well lit because of the lanterns. There's three doors, three, um, three um, possibilities. Uh, none of these doors necessarily need to be uh, locked, but we'll go into that, like I said, tomorrow. And um, there are a couple of things we want to talk about when it comes to uh, room design. I know a lot of people, when they're creating a room or drawing a room, they make them so small that there's just no place to maneuver. It's like tight corridors, and then you're into a small room, which is two by three and squares, which is fine for a broom cupboard, but not really very much fun if you're trying to lay out a dungeon or a castle area. Okay, so try to make your rooms a decent size and functional for what they are. So this, the room, the room here is all it is is like a uh, an entry point. Think lobby entry point or uh, even a waiting room. You could put along the wall here. We could have some benches some seats where people can sit down. I don't know if that's necessarily a particularly good drawing, but no, it's not a bit, if it, no, it's, it's pretty awful. My straight lines are non-existent. Okay, so some benches over here for them to sit at as they wait. So it's essentially supposed to be laid out as a waiting room, but it's a trap. And you put this near the beginning of your dungeon or your castle or the lair that they're exploring or whatever it is, so that they encounter this, so that they find it harder to get through, and you start causing them a bit of pain and anguish. So that's essentially all I have in terms of drawing it, but there are a couple of things, as I said, that we're going to discuss tomorrow in terms of populating this little sucker, and that would be uh, what sort of light source does it have, uh, how, how do we lay out treasure, is there going to be treasure at all, um, I've got a list here of all the things, so Chamber description, we'll cover chamber description, door types, I'm going to go with stone doors, I think that's suitable, but you could have them with many wooden doors, um, chamber exits, so we've got three three exits for this one, are there stairs, uh, what's the purpose of the chamber, which we've just discussed what the purpose of this chamber is, uh, are there traps, and as we know there is one trap, are there any kind of hazards, any obstacles they need to deal with, any monsters, there's no monsters in this room that I tend to um, um, place in there, I have no intention of doing so, but you can. You could make these animated armor if you feel it would be more interesting, and then they're forced to move around and step on the rug. Up to you. Any tricks, any noises, smells, any furniture, we've placed a couple of benches here to sit on, so there's a bit of furniture. Your lighting, figure out whether it's um, dark, where it's dim light, or br brightly lit. And uh, any non-player characters that might exist in your location. And it's dimensions, which we've already discussed. So that's pretty much it. Really, really simple. Nothing to it. And uh, we're going to come back and go through all the details that I just talked about tomorrow. Because it's taken me at least, what, what, almost 15 minutes just to draw this silly thing. Okay? So we are going to come back. I just want to go through the chat real quick. So I don't disappear. But if you liked this and found it useful... What I want to do is try to get it down to a point where I can show you how to draw them up in like less than a minute. Really, really fast uh, so that you can, you know, um, get an idea of, well, actually I don't need to spend a lot of time doing this. Okay? Um, so share and like it if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, let me know. Um, subscribe and uh, hit the bell button if you want to watch more of this sort of stuff because I will continue to draw more maps. I have quite a few tucked away. Although my, my precious map book got stolen, the ones where I had drawn like a whole bunch. Um, but never mind, it happens. Okay, we're well, moving on. And uh, if you want to support my channel, you have supported my channel by watching this video. I do appreciate everybody who showed up. Let me know if you're wanting a different sort of um, uh, feel to how this works, or I needed to make it longer or shorter or anything like that. Um, I don't do Patreon, but down in the description there are affiliate links. You buy stuff online, I get a small commission. Thank you very much. And um, that's pretty much it. Stay in the um, chat. I'll have a chat with you right now, now that I've finished drawing that map out. Otherwise, you can leave your feedback in the comments section, and I will. Uh, I certainly will try to respond to as many people as I possibly can. And hey, guys, 
Uh, thanks for showing up. And until next time, keep rolling your 20s. Or roll the 20 on the 20-sided dice somewhere.